Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop, ready for another round on this radio. Now, I have to talk a little bit before I get going on the radio. Um, there's a couple hours of work here between the end of the last video and right now uh, that I did on this radio, poking around, doing tests and all kinds of stuff. I videoed the whole thing, but I won't be posting any of that because ultimately the message I got out of all that effort is pretty clear. And here's the message. The local oscillator is not working in this radio. Why that is the case, I don't know. I have tested or checked as much of the circuitry around here as I can. I found only one real anomaly, if it is even an anomaly. It appears as if the front end of this radio is working, as I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to go through some of the tests I did and we'll sort of re repeat them and make sure that uh, I wasn't uh, in error when I was and the conclusions I was drawing. So it looks like after the second transistor, there's only two transistors in this circuit, after the second one the signal appears to be there, I'm not sure of that, and somehow it can't make it through a couple of components and onto this brown wire and then off into the IF circuits and on its way. It can't seem to make it to this wire here and I'm at a loss as for why. I have checked resistors, I have checked capacitors as best I can without withdrawing, without extracting them from the circuit. Uh, I've looked for short circuits, I've looked for open circuits. I have also uh, tested the uh, transistors as best I can using a multimeter, you know, on its diode setting here. Everything checks out okay, but the radio is not working. And I'm still convinced the problem is here. The reason I'm convinced of that is I can't find a proper signal developed here and when I put in a sort of proper signal uh, from the signal generator over here it seemed to come out the speaker it seemed to go through the IF and come out bearing in mind I had put in an amplitude modulated signal into a frequency modulated detector that's probably why it sounded kind of scratchy when we heard it but that was enough to tell me that this is probably working give it a Give it a 10.7 carrier type signal and it should come out the speaker. So everything points to here. Now if you look on the uh, screen here, I can't remember the last video I posted. I'm not sure I had any of that up on the screen. But it, on the right obviously is my oscilloscope and on the left is the SDR. The SDR is hooked up to this. Good. So this is the antenna input to the SDR. I guess the SDR is currently tuned at 10.7 and I'm not doing anything with it at the moment because we're going we're gonna to use the scope to start with so let me get the scope lead here and make sure I've got the right thing yep okay so what we're going to do is we're going to trace the RF signal coming from this RF generator over here this guy here in fact I don't have to have this in the middle This guy who I craftily left on all night. So this is putting out a signal, an FM signal at 100 megahertz, plus or minus, plus or minus, a little wee bit. And this radio can, can, can well, as, as I'm going to demonstrate, can pick up this signal and process it to some degree before it seems to disappear. So we'll start right where the signal comes in. So this is the output from the signal generator hooked up to the antenna wire of the radio I'm testing. Okay, and we'll just watch the scope as I work my way down through the circuitry here as best I can. I mean, I, I, I'm look, just looking at this. I know this is the start of the antenna here. Oh, son of a gun. <laughs> okay, well, we gotta stop for a minute and talk about the shock I just got. Okay, so I think I got a shock. I get fooled in here regularly where I have little nerve things, you know, that I'm sure it happens to everybody. Just occasionally you get your hands in a certain position, you get a little ding, little nerve thing. I keep thinking those are electric shocks, and they're not. But I think this was. I think what happened was, look at the idiotic thing I'm doing. Yes, don't be an idiot. I'm holding this like this because I don't want to hook up the clip lead. I'm holding it in my hand. Guess what? That makes me grounded big time grounded uh, right back to the power system and then I touched the chassis and uh, that was not a good idea. I won't do that again. 
You know what? I shouldn't have got a shock from that. Okay, so we'll put this down to I probably got fooled into thinking I just got a shock from a radio that's not even turned on and there's no power whatsoever available to it. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. So we will, yeah, I haven't even got the stupid radio on, but it's okay. That's okay. I do the first test with the radio off. And there is the signal, okay, on the scope here. To prove it, I'll turn it level up and down, down and up. Let's put it up pretty high here. Okay, now, you can hear my cat meowing outside. So we're going to power this guy up now. Hey, let's, before we do that, let's look at the same thing. No, we, we, we won't. It's too much of a hassle. For me to see this, I have to explain something. The, the SDR has two frequency ranges and they split somewhere around 50 megahertz or so. So if I'm looking at something below, say, 50, I have to set the SDR up a certain way. If I'm looking above 50, I have to set the SDR up a different way. It's a hassle. So we're going to leave it where it is. And uh, I don't know if that makes any sense. So, so we can't look at the incoming signal because I've got it currently set up for 10.7. Right, so I'm going to turn on the radio now. I'll just make sure everything is safe here. Now I could really get a shock. Okay, so I can hear the radio. Is that my imagination or is that... that, that that's more than it used to produce. So I, I There's no evidence that the radio is receiving anything as I tune this, right? Or is there? Let's put this here. Incoming signal. I'll clip this right here. So this is basically what is coming right out of the signal generator. But if I tune the radio, you can see a variation in it. And, and the reason for that is the radio circuitry is either more or less receptive to the signal, more or less uh, um, ab absorbing it, I guess is maybe an okay word. So it's not too surprising you would see that basically right on the antenna wire. Obviously the output from the signal generator itself isn't changing. So that's, this, this is probably the radio tuned in, I'm going to guess, right there. Now we'll trace forward into the radio here. So the circuit, the signal comes along the top part of the board. It reaches the first trans transistor here. So we'll, we'll try to imitate that. And see, I'm just looking at the traces here, so I really don't know what components are on top. That's the actual incoming wire. Okay, so now you saw a DC current throw the scope off for a moment. We've gotten to the transistor. This is the... It's this transistor here. So we'll start with the base. The base of the transistor is this. Okay. The emitter shows this and the collector shows that and if I turn down the so you can see that's definitely the FM signal coming in and if I tune the radio now well we get a strange result at this point so not exactly sure now you know we could be looking at for all I know we could be looking at the local oscillator and I'm just too clued out to realize what I'm seeing there. Okay, interesting. So we're going to uh, jump further into the circuit now to the second transistor, which I believe is the one that's mixing the local oscillator and the uh, incoming signal and producing the 10.7 uh, IF signal. It's still an assumption on my part that it's 10.7. Uh, still a pretty good assumption, I think. 
So we'll look at the three terminals of the next transistor. We'll start with the base. So this is what's on the base of the next transistor. Base. And then the emitter. Look at the size of that now. Now is that really the radio? I'm going to tune it. Now we can see the tuning of the radio quite clearly. Okay, so we'll peak that. And then this is the collector, I'm pretty sure, yeah, collector. And this always introduces noise for the first time coming out of the radio speaker. So, and you know, it's easy for me to believe that that signal on the collector is the signal that's needed to go out the IF. So there should be a 10.7 component in that. So in order to see the 10.7 component, let me switch over to the SDR. Just to protect things, if I put this on times 10, well, it's weakened it quite a bit, but let's give it a try. I haven't normally clipped it, but I'm going to clip it this time. I'm going to whack my radio with a big voltage on its antenna. That's true, I am going to do that, so I'm going to avoid doing that. Just introduce a capacitor here, very awkwardly. Capacitor doesn't mess everything up. We'll look at the same. So I don't see a thing happening on the SDR. We'll flip this to times one. You might say, why are you using a scope lead anyway? So here's the thing, if, if there's no 10.7 signal there, we're not going to see it. This is, the, the, the problem here is I'm trying to prove something doesn't exist. I'm trying to prove the negative. It's really difficult. Okay. Uh, there was a little DC voltage there. 11 volts, that's a little much to stick on the front end of my radio, so I don't want to get rid of this capacitor. But I, I, I will try it with a different lead. I can't believe this wouldn't work, which is why I keep trying it every time I try it. Kind of sends back the message, maybe it's not working. So we'll just try a straightforward test lead here. Okay, so if the radio is operating properly, it's tuned to 100 megacycles. The local oscillator should be at 110.7. So I have made the changes to the SDR now that are needed so we can receive at 110.7. So let's see if we can find the signal. What we should be finding is a single oscillator frequency see a thing there so I'll put this back on I'll tune the radio and try to move the local oscillator frequency all we're doing at this point is just proving once again there is no local oscillator in this radio oops okay Kind of, kind of, kind of gone through where I've gotten uh, previously. So I'm at the point now where I have to make a decision about changing this transistor because I don't know what else to do, or really focusing on this anomaly. The anomaly is the um, 
transmitter voltage is supposed to be 2.2 here and I measure 0. Let's verify that. So on the emitter that's here, 2.4 volts should be should appear. I get a zero here. And I checked this capacitor, good. I've checked the resistance uh, here. Uh, it's, there's a resistance. I've checked this capacitor. Uh, it's not shorted. I have not checked this one here. But I poked all over the place in this circuitry. Checked this, I checked all this stuff. I spent a lot of time checking all these things. Couldn't find a single reason for anything to be out of sorts. I checked these diodes, the whole shot, everything. So why don't we start with this? This is zero, it should not be. Okay, is it really zero? So let's let's repeat that measurement right now. Is it really zero? volt scale DC everything's interesting and this is the emitter you have pretty solid zero in half okay so I'm on the 200 millivolt scale I mean that that's as that's as, as zero that's as much a zero as you can get. Okay, power off. I'm going to repeat one of the tests I did. I'm going to go to resistance and find out what's the resistance between that point and the chassis. Is it is it shorted? No. So that kind of voltage. What is that? That's a resistance. That's uh, a resistance. But it's not shorted, is it? 7K. Yet, totally zero volts. 7K. Let's see if we can figure that out on the schematic. So I'm reading to the chassis from the emitter. From the emitter. So from here to the chassis, I'm reading 7,000 ohms. The chassis is hooked up here. So this is all chassis voltage through here. So instead of 2.4, I'm getting a hard zero here. So that really implicates this capacitor, but I'm reading 7,000 ohms from here to here. So if this capacitor is good, and if this capacitor is good, then only in this capacitor, Ooh, I never looked at this one. Zero here. So, I mean, if this were shorted, uh, you'd be getting, I, mean, I am measuring. Oh, this comes down through here. I thought it was connected there. It's not. Hmm. Hmm. You would think, though, uh, what did I measure on the collector of that is uh, uh, 11 volts. So, you know, I, I'm measuring this. Oops. I am, I am, hold still. I am measuring this, essentially. So you think if I can measure 11 volts, yeah, but wait, it's 11 volts on this. I'm sort of thinking through the same mistake again. Yeah, I spent a long time doing this <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> doing this exact same thing. But it's worth doing again. So, you know, it's really suspicious. How can I be suspicious? I'm measuring 7,000 ohms. How do you get 7,000 ohms? There's 100. 15K, is 15 in parallel with something? 
15 and 33 in parallel give you 7,000. 7,000 through a leaky capacitor. 7,000 ohms. How do you get a zero here when you have a 7,000 ohm resistance to ground? Why not? Why wouldn't the 7,000 support the 2.4 volts? And what is the 2.4 volts? Well, it's the current flowing. I, I, I believe from the supply here through 470. Well, it's that little capacitor, don't miss that, because the way they've drawn it, it looks like this is a continuous line, but it's not. Through here, through here. Oops. Through here. Diode pointing the wrong way. So, clearly through here, of course. So you want, I mean, you want the plate current to go through this coil. Jim, you could have kind of thought your way through that a little quicker, I think. You thought about it. So the output of this is energizing this, which is energizing that, which is then sending it on its way. This is where I injected the 10.7 and heard stuff come out of the speaker. We've looked at this and seen a signal here. But we can't tell if it's just the signal from the signal generator through the antenna from down here, or whether it's the local oscillator, which I believe it is not. So why wouldn't this transistor oscillate? Now, because this isn't 2.4 volts. Let's just stay, stay on topic. Stay on the topic. So, uh, I could read the voltage across this capacitor, C63. The real difficulty here is identifying these components. It's virtually impossible in there. So what if I uh, uh, put my ohmmeter on this lead and then try to... I can put it down here. That's essentially what I've done. That gives me the 7,000 ohms. 7,000. This close. This is 22. Somehow I got it in my head. It was one. Well, that's from looking over here. So this is this is 22k. Hmm. Okay. So how do you get seven when you got a 22 sitting there? There's no parallel path this way. No parallel path that way. No parallel path this way. If all those capacitors are good, the only way is down through this 22. But we see seven. This guy's leaky. Well, I should be able to read across this resistor. If I put my ohmmeter across the resistor, and no current. Well, see, I'm, I'm not quite sure what might leak through a transistor, but let's assume nothing. So nothing, nothing, nothing. So I should be able to put my ohmmeter right across this resistor and read 22k. Let's try that. Is this really 22 or is this guy shorting them out? 22k, 22k, okay. Okay on the 22k. Radio is currently off. Way to go, Jim. 22k is a red, red. It's in there somewhere. Red, red. red down in this area here. You yeah, know, I got another little tingle. I think it's just my imagination. Famous last words. Yeah. Somewhere in there is the 22. Okay, so do you see a red, red? I don't see a red, red. There's a diode right there, that black thing. Kind of an unusual looking diode. Uh, I tested all those. 
based on my test they're okay. So why can't I find the 22K resistor? What's going wrong here? 22K, looking again where that's supposed to be. It's definitely 22K R5. Right beside a big coil. Well, that's probably the problem. There's the 22K resistor is missing entirely from the circuit. How about that? Okay. It shouldn't be up this area. Red, red, orange. missing here. There's orange, orange, red. So what's, what's, what's the story on this? I'm getting really quiet now. Um, well, we know there's been changes to the circuitry in this radio uh, based on the handwritten stuff on the schematic. How, how can there not be a 20? What must be right in front of me, and I'm not seeing it. So that that first resistor there is a little hard to see, but I, I don't see red on it at all. It should be right next to one of those coils. So, you know, so there's the coil. Brown, black, brown. Orange, orange, red. Is that it? Red, that looks like, well, it looks like red, 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 or orange, orange, orange. That, uh, brown one right in the middle there. I'll have to read it. And then, then there's these two. Brother and sister here. Um, I, I identified those earlier on. So now that's definitely orange, orange, red. Once again I'm getting the sensation I'm being electrocuted here. <laughs> like, a, uh, like a brush shock. I just touch the chassis. I think it's just, I'm just hyper, I'm hyper. So I'm looking on the wrong board. There's a red, red, orange. What, what are the chances? I am totally wrong. No, no, it can't be. It, can't, it just can't be. It just can't be the case. Can't be the case. It has to be over here. Okay, well, it's not one on the bottom, is there? They hide one down here? Somehow I didn't see it? What? No. Holy smokes. Not, not quite the challenge I was expecting here. K is connected between and I take a look at this it's connected between well one side of it is right on the base of that transistor I'm talking about right here 22k connected right to the base so if I go base to chassis I should see 22k there could be other stuff also so I should see let's try it Base, base to 
chassis. Base to chassis, base to chassis. <laughs> Come in, please. Base. Guess I gotta touch the real one here. And the meter's not on. Base to chassis. 2.6. K. 2.6K. Now, how do you figure that? We're looking at the base to the chassis. There's many, many resistance paths to make it between these prongs here. Not just the 22K. There's all kinds of them in there. So we haven't proved a darn thing here. What, what what would be wrong with this resistor? Be open circuited entirely. If it went open circuit, then the uh, emitter is facing uh, capacitors in every direction if that, re if that resistor is open. Okay, so if this resistor is open circuited, then this is looking at a capacitor, a capacitor, a capacitor, a capacitor in every direction. I would think that would let this float high in voltage. You get out your own voltmeter, you'd read something here. I would think. But I'm, I don't know for sure. Yeah, I'm really tempted to pull this transistor out. There's, no, no, we don't do that. There's a zero here. No short through this transistor, but there's zero volts sitting here. 2.4 is, there should be something here. Well, maybe if this was open. I think if this is shorted, but I keep reading a resistance here. What am I not doing right? Do I have the collector and emitter mixed up? Did I did I get my my uh, chart not worked out properly? Okay, you know what? I'm going to go back one step. I'm going to. What I'm talking about is this. Did I get this right? Maybe I didn't get this right. So I'm going to spend some time double checking that. Okay, so I double checked this. I'm sure I've got this correct. So what I'm going to do? I don't know what else to do. I'm going to pull the transistor out and test the transistor out of the unit and see if there isn't a problem with the transistor that I can pick up on. So that's, that's what's going to happen here. I've been trying to avoid doing that, but most likely, you know, it could be the, uh, the gain of this transistor is poor now. It's not enough to kick in the oscillator and get the oscillator going, but it is enough to pass through a little bit of signal I can pick up on my instruments here and make me think that the transistor is is passing signals okay, and, and and perhaps it is kind of, it's just not strong enough to trigger uh, the oscillator. I don't know. It's a good question. Once I get the out of there, I may be able to make more circuit tests with the transistor out. He says very hopefully.
any harder on this transistor. I don't feel any lead wire sticking through anymore. Jeepers creepers. I really think I've retracted the leads when they're just on the upside of the board. Huh. Right on. That's the case. That's the case. Can I not wiggle this thing out? Dentist technique here. This is what they do to you, your teeth. They just grab on, start pulling. So I've broken the lead right off the transistor here. So I'll just crank it out, get it out of there. It's, it's shot now, that's for sure. Come on out, you piece of chunk, you. You, you creep. Okay, it's really made my day. <laughs> leads out. Oh my gosh. You left part of the root behind, sir. Sorry. I have to dig in there and get it. Oh my god. You're going to give up on this. It's got to come. Oh, it's out. It's out. It's out, sir. <laughs> Just go to the front desk now and pay the bill. Okay, here it is. Let's take a close look at this. Totally, totally ruined transistor. Now, I'm not without transistors in my stock. Yeah, look, I broke the lead right off clean to the to the body of it. 461. 461. And when we look at the, uh, let's take a look at this. So we see you wrote in 2SC461. So originally it was these guys, then later they switched to these. All I can do is put a replacement in at this point and see what happens. So I got to find a suitable replacement for 461 or find one in my collection. I, I, I have lots to look through. Okay, that's where we're at for today. Uh, that's where we're at for now. Anyway, maybe I'll get back to this later. Oh boy. Well, that's my tub of transistors here. And in this tub of transistors, which I took the time quite a while ago to do an inventory of everything that's in here because there's a lot. Guess what? I've got the replacements for this. So this is a uh, 2SC461 and you can replace that with a 460 and I've got 10 of them brand new. Fantastic! So I'm going to work away at putting one of these in. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I've studied the pinout on this transistor. It's the same as the one it's replacing. It's uh, emitter collector base. Base collector emitter. So I want to get these bent in the right way. I think I do now. So if we emitter collector base, put my finger on the base, flip it around like this. Collector is always in the middle on this one. Base collector emitter, base collector emitter. So it should go in like this. Perfect. I'm just going to take the angle off these a little bit. Make it a little easier to get them to go in. 
Good. Now I gotta get the holes open in there. That's my next challenge. towards the back. There it goes. Okay, we got it in. That's impressive in itself. Okay, I don't think it'll fall out unless I really bang it here. There they are. Okay, soldering iron's ready. So am I. Solder's not ready. I can feel the excitement building here. Will this work, or will he have just messed this thing right up to no end? Here we go. So, uh, slaughter. That guy. This guy here. Oop. They sucked away the solder from these pads, uh, including many other connections that are in here. Gotta add it back. Okay. Take a close look at that. See what we got. What have we got now? You see the three standing up leads. Those are the transistor leads. So then I managed to not make a bridge. Son of a gun, I just got another shock. How, how is this possible? Okay, hold the fort. That was really a shock. And I don't even see how it's possible. What is going on in my shop here? So, I'm touching this for sure, and I touch that chassis. It's not even plugged in. There's no equipment attached to it. The speaker is attached to it. something funny going on with the speaker. How, how could that be? I'll show you. Let's investigate. Let's investigate. It's one of these times uh, I'm going to die. So way up here is the speaker. Now, it's all plastic. It's all plastic. So it can't possibly short. Wires are the wires. The wires are the wires. Oh, you know what? You know what's hooked up here? I think. Yes, this is the guy. Back to this guy. Now, I don't think this is a three-prong plug here. Let's just see what's going on. So, get my voltmeter. Let's find out what's happening here. 
if I'm going to die being electrocuted, I'd like to know it. Think about that. Eh? Have I ever told you the story about the guy? This is a true story. Uh, when I was working in downtown Toronto, there were a lot of tall buildings in downtown Toronto, 40, 50 stories tall. Some guy working in an office in one of those tall buildings up high wanted to show his friends that you couldn't break those windows. You couldn't break them. So he leaped up against one of them, went right through it, and fell to his death. You know, I thought about this so many times in my life. And I've always wondered, what went through his head the moment he went through that window? He had four seconds, five seconds to think about what he had done. Oh my God, isn't that... <laughs> Those windows are not safe. Don't jump against them. Okay. Now I can calm down now. They're going a little nutsy there. Right, we want to check for some kind of AC voltage here. So I'm just going to do it right... Yeah, I'm going to get a shock doing it. Nothing there. What about right to ground? Oi, oi, wait a minute, what was that? It came and went. 60 volts. So that's almost certainly coming through here. That explains why I'm getting tingles and not shots. Let's try it again. Hot diggity dog, how do you like that? Now it's probably just, just metal picking up stuff. That's not. So, how do you like that? I like it. Now I know. Death stalks you at every turn. Now the, these pieces of equipment, like, like this one with the two-pronged plug, they're kind of designed, so you could get a tingle shock off them, but not anything more than a tingle. That's, it. That's the theory. Everybody watch out. Okay, we're going to turn this guy on now, I think. I don't see why not. Was there anything else I did to it? I don't think so. Will it work at all still? Hang on, the light is taken off here. It's heading for parts unknown. Let's put it where it's supposed to be. I'll have to kind of fix this in here better. Yeah, replace this grommet maybe. Okay, stay put. Plug in. Should I put on goggles for this? Safety goggles. Get everything out of the way so you know molten metal won't splash on it. Anything valuable. <laughs> Switch is off. This has got to be on FM. We are ready. Let's hit the switch. The switch has been hit. We turn it on. Okay, so a couple things before I turn around, a couple things. Uh, one is it could make horrible sounds. Secondly, there could be a puff of smoke come up here. Thirdly, who knows? We don't know what thirdly is. Let's find out. That sounds pretty good. That doesn't. Check the voltage of that one pin with the meter. Voltage was supposed to be 2.4, but it tests at zero. Is it any different? I'm checking right here. 1.35 now. Is that right? No, it was this one. It's this one. It's still zero. Okay, so we know it was not that transistor. Radio seems to have a little more oomph in it now, so maybe the new one I put in is actually <laughs> a little more. Looks like we're still missing the local oscillator. Interestingly enough, when I was hunting around for replacement uh, transistors and whatnot, uh, I noticed the one that was in there was called an oscillator transistor. 
Well, I'm sure you can, you know, it depends what circuit you put it in, but that's what it was called at one point. So, it's still not oscillating. I don't have any way of faking the oscillator frequency. It's too high for all my equipment here. I can't get up to 100. I could put in a fake uh, local oscillator and then see if the rest of the radio works and that might just make me feel a little bit better about things. I still believe there's no local oscillator. There must be another component failure. We still have a zero where we should have 2.4 volts. It's not the fault of the transistor. Okay, another long journey just to eliminate something, eliminate an idea, and move on to other other ideas. So, well, thanks for watching this story, and um, I will study the schematic. We'll figure out a new approach come uh, tomorrow. Thanks for watching all this.